the Diego State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tony Kuka. You're welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me, Mr. All right, of course, and I have my colleague also in the house, Dominic Agbea. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here on the table, and of course, um, looking at this all important issue uh, as far as um, ensuring that health care, really, particularly measles, uh, is, um, uh, is um, uh, put uh, at rest in, in the state. Mm. Well, let, let, let's Go begin by, by looking at um, the relevance and the importance of this campaign and of course um, this um, uh, exercise on the people in the state. Well, thank you very much. Um, Ubu State on Saturday embarked on his um, 20, uh, 2024 measles vaccination campaign. And the reason this is important for our children under five is uh, measles is a highly contagious uh, viral infection that is spread by it's airborne, so by cough and getting close to people um, that have the disease, can, you can catch it. And, uh, but the important thing is it is preventable, preventable by vaccines. And that's where we want all our children under five to be vaccinated because the complications of having measles could be blindness for the child, mm. they could go deaf. If they have high fever, that high fever could damage their brain cells and make them um, disabled, cerebral palsy, or even have seizures for, you know, for the rest of their lives. And we don't want that. We want our children to grow healthy, attain their full potential. Okay. And the most cost-effective way to do that is to do the vaccination to prevent the disease. So why is it periodic? Why not at every, possibly on every government hospital that a, if a mother gives birth, at that point, such a child should be, because we are saying it's zero to five. If a child does not have it between age one, two, three, and perhaps it might have been infected by that virus and the, the, the result could be, can be imagined. So uh, there are different types of uh, vaccination um, uh, programs. There's the routine immunization, which children get at two, three, five, uh, four months okay. that they get routinely, and every now and again, we do campaigns to catch up on children that we may have missed during those campaigns. So you know the uh, vaccine called MMR that is given at two, three, and four months. Um, that is measles, mumps, and rubella. That's mm -hmm. given at, every, uh, at the age of two months, three months, and four months. Mm -hmm. But this campaign is to make sure that if per adventure we had um, missed a child during this routine immunization, and we can mop them up during the campaign. The last campaign we did on measles was 2022, and our coverage then was 86%. Wow. And um, this time around, when we actually surveyed the number of our children that had been immunized with measles, we found that it was, our uh, vaccination rate was 83%. So there is a slight drop which we're uncomfortable about because right. that we find that the children that suffer from the complications and get measles are actually the unvaccinated ones. So if we can reduce the number of unvaccinated children by this campaign, then um, we would have uh, done very well. Our hope is that we'll have a 95 to 100% coverage. As of 2022, we had about 117 cases of measles diagnosed in Augusti. Because of the campaign we did two years ago, this year, as of date, we've only had 29 children diagnosed mm -hmm. with measles, which means we're ma ma making progress. Mm -hmm. And if we can get a 100% coverage, then the hope is that we won't find any child with measles in the next two years. Mm -hmm. And um, like everything, the, there's a limit to resource. Mm -hmm. So because of the limitation of the resource globally, each country is allocated a number of vaccines. Okay. So they calculate your population and look at the most vulnerable group that the vaccine can actually work most effectively okay. for. So using data, we found that children, if you immunize children under five, you, you have better effectiveness. Anyone above that would have been exposed to measles at some point or the other okay. and develop their own natural immunity. Mm -hmm. So people don't need to worry about 
children on the, ob above five because they would have developed their natural immunity. And for children on, under five that we're trying to catch so that they can develop their natural immunity, and also as individuals develop their natural immunity, there's also community immunity because there are less people carrying the virus, so less contact with people that are uninfected. So as a whole, as a community, we all get protected. Okay, all right. Uh, uh, in the past, uh, I want to make reference to polio. There was a particular acronym there, which of which Nigeria was part of PAIN, P A I N, Pakistan, Afghanistan, India, and Nigeria. At the point, Nigeria scaled the order and WHO certified Nigeria to be polio free. Yeah. Is it possible for measles to be completely eliminated also in Nigeria? Absolutely, because uh, the way polio, polio is a virus as well, and that was eradicated. Uh, the same way we eradicated polio, we can eradicate measles in countries, other climes. They don't report cases of uh, measles because, as I said, if, the, if we have about 9,500% of us immunized, even if there's one person with the virus, they can't transmit it to another oh, person. So it stopped oh. with them, and that's how you declare a nation um, fully free or hopefully at some point will become uh, measles free. Mm. So yeah, perhaps what we say might be free too, because from one and something to 29 now, yeah, that was a possibility, possibility in the next year, you know, but you yeah. have to sustain that for about five years for oh. people to. So if by this year, if we, we count our children by the grace of God, if we don't di diagnose any of them with uh, measles in two years' time, then they check in another two years. By the third time, they'll say the state is. Um, uh, measures, yeah. okay. Now let us look at the measures that um, your ministry has actually put in place uh, to ensure that um, all the children under this um, or within this age bracket are meant to have access to this um, vaccination campaign actually have access to it in all the 20 local government areas of the state. So in our planning, um, the planning for this campaign started way before this week. Uh, a few weeks back. The first thing we do when we plan a campaign is a mapping out of the communities that we have to reach. And when we map them out, then we now allocate teams to each community up to settlements. For instance, the nomadic settlements, we have teams allocated to them and resources to get them to uh, Odumi, to get them to Odeda, you know, those border, the remote areas, yeah, the remote areas yeah. hard to reach areas, Yewa, to make sure that no child is left out. So each team has an allocated number of communities and children allocated to them. And um, also we have town criers, what we call community mobilizers, uh, five in each ward that is under the um, employment of the ministry, the primary health care board, that we engage their services whenever we have these campaigns and they go out in the local dialect to educate the community to come out. We've also strategically mapped out our locations. But we're not roaming, we're static, but we've mapped out our locations to be schools because you have under fives in schools of course. um we then go to markets because you find moms with their babies in markets mm -hmm. yesterday i was in the mosque and uh, churches with my team we were mm -hmm. out so because we know people congregate in the church mm -hmm. in one church that we went to there were almost like 200 under fives wow. that yeah or yesterday just in the bar here so we are strategic about where we look at ourselves the last thing is every single PhD across the 236 local government is a vaccination point. Mm -hmm. And the way PhDs are constructed is PhDs are meant to be within five miles of every home. So every mother has an opportunity. If we haven't caught up with you in your church or mosque yesterday, we haven't caught up with you in the market, your child is not in school, please avail your child, your ward, you know, um, to come to our PhD to get vaccinated during the course of this week. We're there yeah. till Saturday next yeah, week. And try to be more strategic, or definitely there may be one or two areas in the state where it is more prevalent, mm. and you want to deploy more things to that area. Mm. Uh, is it possible to share sh such information as to where in the state is it more prevalent, and what are those things that have been done to actually nip it in the bus so that it won't spread beyond, because it is contagious 
one person that has it, the child that has it can spread it mm. to other children. So what the fact is, we don't have a measles outbreak at the moment, so we can't say it's more prevalent in, a, in one area mm. than the other because there's no outbreak. What this is a preventative immunization oh, okay. campaign. Um, we're anticipating, uh, preempting the fact that if we immunize these children now, they are unlikely to spread the disease. So I got, there's no one local government that is more prevalent than the other. The point is, where do we have under five? So that's yeah. how we do it. Where do we have the most under five? So you have some um, LGAs that have more under fives than okay. others. So Abelkuta South, um, when you go to Ijebu North, there, there's not many uh, young people there. Okay. So it's the population that decides the um, how much we uh, deploy resources. So the entire, uh, the COVID right now is spread across the 20, 20 local areas. It's area. 236. Um, words. Words. not um, just 20 local governments, because okay. if I say 20 local governments, I might just put 111. I have 236 okay. wards, okay. and we have over uh, 1,000 teams across the state. 5,000 health workers are out there wa wa walking around and making sure that our children get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were talking earlier on, you said um, the uh, vaccines are actually distributed based on population and based on what is really available mm -hmm. in the vaccine bank. Mm -hmm. um, are you optimistic that what we have in terms of the vaccine uh, would actually be enough for, will be more than enough really for the number of children that will need this particular? Absolutely. We are aiming to vaccinate about 1.2 million children under five. We have more than enough vaccines. I was at the cold store yesterday to mm -hmm. check. Um, yesterday afternoon to check um, that the vaccines are there. I saw them. I saw the distribution going on at the uh, uh, cold room. What the uh, part of the planning is, once we've decided we're immunizing 1.2 million children, the National Primary Health Care Board ensures that that state that is implementing that campaign has that 1.2. We okay. even have a little bit over because we have issues with the denominator of the population. Um, sometimes we have migration into the state, sure. so we have to accommodate for that. So you always have a little bit excess over and above what you have planned to vaccinate. At the moment, Lagos, uh, Ogun State, Oyo, and even uh, Bene Republic, we're all vaccinating at the same time because we share border mm. with all the states to ensure that if a child crosses from um, Ogun State to Oyo State, they're not missed. And if they cross over to Benin Republic as well, they're not missed okay. because sometimes people, because of trade or family reasons, they move their children about. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at um, um, challenges really that um, you anticipate may actually um, you be confront in the course of uh, these uh, vaccination campaigns and how you intend to address some of these challenges. So the major challenge that we anticipate is vaccine rejection, which mm. is parents um, refusing to have their children immunized. Uh, we've tried to address that by me coming to the media. I've mm. been doing that for the last three days. Uh, we also have um, health educators in each of those local governments that go out and educate the people. We have town choirs. We've engaged our traditional leaders. We've engaged religious leaders to explain the importance of this. And really, the immunization campaign does not start today. It starts from the point when the woman gets pregnant. So throughout the antenatal period, we've been educating them mm -hmm. about the importance of immunizing their children for various diseases. So our hope is that what we have been saying over, over time, the, over time uh, will now yield a fruit. You know. uh, the second um, challenge that I would expect is the misinformation. And uh, that misinformation is affecting some neighboring um, states. Um, because the mixing up, you know, the HPV vaccine and um, thinking that uh, people are trying to harm their children by vaccinating them, stopping them from conceiving. That yeah. is completely not true in that this is, uh, vaccination is for the benefit of your child. Um, 
there's no point a child developing uh, um, high fever that would damage his very vulnerable brain. Mm. And that's why on the fives are more important because that's the period where all the neurons, nerves that supply the eyes, the ears, the brain, mm. they're, they're developing. Okay. And if they get attacked at that stage by a virus, then they're going to be rendered useless. That's why there's blindness, there's deafness, and uh, cerebral palsy. So um, that's why it's very, very important. Um, so the misinformation, if anybody has any questions, we have health workers in the field. They can ask questions. Don't ask your neighbor. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure, ask a health worker. I will be able to give you the information. We also have Servicom numbers. If you go on our website, the state website, you have my number. You can text me. That's fine. I'll answer. You didn't mention schools, primary schools, especially. You said uh, you have reached out to religious values. We, so we reached out. I said our locations include schools. We actually flagged off in uh, Bafenye Wede on Friday in a primary school. Mm -hmm. All our teachers are well on board and the uh, principals, the PTA, we actually included the uh, PTA, which is the Parents Teachers Association. Uh, the chairman was at the flag off. We actively engaged uh, heads of schools. We've talked about the fears that you have that uh, every child that has measles, uh, the resultant effects on that child. Mm -hmm. But per adventure, a child is killed with at the age of five. Because we have seen people that will tell you uh, at the age of 10 or at the age of 18, that's when they, they got blindness and this is, we weren't born like that. And mm -hmm. So, but eventually a child is it. Are you not thinking of also the age bracket that starts from 6 and possibly begin to look at that? Because our weather research has even proven that any child that's above 6 can actually contract this disease, uh, virus. So, um, number one, measles is not the only cause of blindness. So, if a child goes blind after five, it doesn't necessarily mean it's measles. It could be anything. And that the parent must ensure that they look into the cause of the blindness. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have congenital cataract that could cause blindness. But going back to measles, uh, measles, um, a child over five, we're hoping at some point, because if I'm doing two yearly, um, immunization campaign apart from the routine immunization we would hope that that child would have had three opportunities minimum two opportunities to have been vaccinated because we're starting from nine months to 59 months so during that period we expect that we would have captured that child once or twice and um, the second thing is as I mentioned earlier if the one is not immunized against it it doesn't mean you won't be exposed to the virus okay. and it's not everybody that gets exposed to the virus actually get a full-blown um, um, symptoms Symptom. so the person could be exposed develop a, a personal immunity and then they become protected naturally because they've been exposed to the virus so as, as so that's okay yeah okay. No, no. as it's not shown to the medical practitioners or the where this virus is coming from what is the cause how did it get to the society and why is it that the children are the target well, the uh, uh, viruses are like there's many in the where we are right now there are uh, millions of microorganisms <laughs> that was the thing so we are not even in the studio no <laughs> no matter where we are there are millions of mi uh, microorganisms viruses bacteria that are around and the way the body protects itself is by you know you have T cells you have uh, you the know, white cells that when the foreign organism enters the body your white cell recognizes it okay. you know, and then they produce antibodies against it and most times if you're well nourished you can actually combat most of the organisms that get into your body without knowing the susceptibility for most of us in low middle income countries is there's a high level of malnutrition mm. and an inability to mount up uh, immune response to the organisms, the foreign organisms in the body. And that's why we are more affected. 
by these um, viral diseases, bacterial diseases, to infectious diseases in low middle, middle income countries like Sub-Saharan Africa because of the uh, level of malnutrition that we have. Mm -hmm. And that is why we target the under fives because we know in Nigeria, the, for instance in Ogun State, the uh, level of stunted growth that is, is up to 30% stunted growth. So a child not reaching, attaining the height it should be mm. at that age, one out of three of our children has that. And mm. that's part of the malnutrition. And there are many children that are underweight. The prevailing economic situation, can it not precipitate it as well, too? It's uh, going to make uh, it worse. Wow. Because uh, people are rationing food mm. to themselves to their children. And not even eating well, yeah, balanced but diet. Yes, they're not eating balanced diet. So um, the children are even not going to be able to mount up that immunity. So that's why we've targeted the very vulnerable brains and you know, nerve tissues, which is the under fives, to make sure that at least we present them. For me, it's a passion mm. to make sure that our children get immunized. The truth is, Nigeria, we have 220 million people, and they tell us that 50% of those are under 18, they're under 16. And for me, the future is that Nigeria is going to be providing labor for the global world. Mm. We will be the workforce. But what sort of workforce do we want to provide? Do we want to be laborers? Or do we want to be scientists, mm. physicists, IT gurus, mm -hmm. astronauts? Mm -hmm. So, the surgeons, yes, yeah, doctors. <laughs> yeah. You know, do we, is that what we want to provide for the world? Mm -hmm. Or people that you go there, they work cleaners in their country, sweeping their gun, because they have not, they've had infectious diseases, some febrile illness when they're young, so they're, they're, their brains have been damaged, they can't attain the IQ that would then make them be productive adults and contribute positively to the economic development of Nigeria. Just imagine. So I see a bigger picture, and that is why I'm passionate about making sure that our children, they are future. Nigeria cannot continue to be a low-income country. We need to move the country smaller. Gabon is much smaller than us. It's a middle-income country. It produces oil like we do. So why can't Nigeria to move into, we have the potential. So it's not that we don't have the potential. We have the mm -hmm. human capa capital. Mm -hmm. We have human capital, extensive. So let's invest in our human capital. This is one of those investments that the government is making. And it's the government of Nigeria and the state government, hand in hand, collaborating to deliver this um, immunization campaign to protect our children. We talk about food security, we talk about physical security, financial security. This is health security, mm. and we need to take it seriously. Okay. Let us look at, um, I mean, whether there are um, any complications, really, or side effects uh, after taking these um, vaccines. Oh, well, this vaccine is hardly any side effects. It's usually a slight febrile. Uh, slight what? Slight febrile illness, so a little okay. bit of temperature because okay. the vaccine is going to mimic the uh, disease a little bit. So when the child is developing immunity against it, mm -hmm. uh, the child might get a little bit warm. So what we tell parents is give the child paracetamol syrup and that would settle. Before uh, or after? After, oh, okay. after okay. the child okay. has received it. And um, if the child is not getting better, take them to the nearest health center, you know, health facility, and we'll review the child. Mm -hmm. Now, let us, um, what will your, your message uh, really uh, to, to, to parents, really? Because, um, yes, quite a number of them, whether we like it or not, uh, they will still actually want to entertain one amount of fear uh, or the other. Uh, I mean, you talked earlier, you said earlier on that uh, don't listen to your, to your neighbors, but whether we like it or not, they will still actually pass that message really okay. to one another. So what would you really be saying uh, mm -hmm. to uh, parents out there who might actually be listening or watching uh, today? So um, today I want to encourage our parents with children between the ages of 9 months and 59 months to bring their children out to be vaccinated against the measles uh, virus. And the vaccine is safe, is effective, and is free of charge. And to parents, um, members of the community, 
If you are not sure of your information, please refrain from sharing it with others. Ensure that you have the correct information before sharing, because this has a consequence for people's lives. Um, for those that want more information, go to the nearest facility and we will be there to provide you adequate information. I also have a request, and this is on the 28th of October. There will be, we have something for the adults from age 18 and above. Okay. Uh, we'll be running this campaign that is called Project 10 Million, Know Your Numbers, Control Your Number, across the entire Nigeria, between the 28th of October to the 3rd of November. The Commissioners of Health have come together to run this campaign to ensure that we screen 10 million Nigerians for hypertension and diabetes for free. Mm -hmm. So you go to your nearest facility or any location where you see a banner and it will be done for free. This is to ensure that we reduce the number of people that collapse suddenly and die mm -hmm. in our society. We noticed that recently, unfortunately, one of the broadcasters and performers, entertainers, uh, Oyeka, finished mm -hmm. a performance and slumped. And we need to ensure that, as much as possible, the non-communicable diseases, which is diabetes and hypertension, are controlled in our communities. So we will do the test for you for free and link you to the nearest treatment center mm -hmm. to continue your management. Okay, so good. please come. All right. Going alongside, is the, you mentioned it the other time, health security, that is what the government is trying to do now. But beyond this, uh, a lot of people want to key into this scheme by the fact that medications are out of their reach. Now, you talk about bringing up uh, 10 million Nigerians that you want to secure their future as well to hypertension and diabetes. To assess drugs for these things are quite enormous. Uh, what are you also doing or planning to do in this direction as well too? Because a lot of people are there bottling up so many health issues, but because of the financial implications, they couldn't come out to get drugs and begin to treat them. So that is why we have seen many people collapsing, with, and as a result of that, they passed on. So what is government also doing to bring down? We have seen taxes, I know it's federal government, mm -hmm. being reduced, VAT being removed from certain uh, food items and the likes of that. But for drugs too, it is imperative. So unfortunately, where Nigeria is at the moment is 95% of the drugs that is being consumed by Nigerians are imported. Yeah. And um, so the coordinating minister is, um, has a strategy uh, and that is to ensure that we increase local manufacturing. That is a drive to reduce the cost of production of our drugs. But for us as individuals, the most effective way to have access to these drugs, whether we like it or not, is health insurance. Mm. The, more, the more we are on health insurance, the better for the community. Each person will benefit. You might not need it now, but what it does is you pool resources. We all put our money, as I like to call it, at Joe Ilira. Mm. We all contribute. When we do that contribution, it's usually one person that will need it at a time. Mm. But we've all put all our money in the pot. And then we're able to procure drugs at a large amount. And that economy of skills crashes the cost of those drugs mm -hmm. so that we can make them available in our health facilities at a cheaper rate. Mm. And that until Nigeria, Nigerians, we actually grasp that concept that health insurance might not be for today, but it's for the good of all. And when you need it, you will have what you need in the measure that you need it at, at a good quality. Rather than right now, we're all going silo and paying bit by